Welcome to Module 2, Physical Activity for Physical Wellness. Our essential questions for this module are, what are the physical activity recommendations for my age group? Why should I avoid being sedentary throughout my day? And how can meeting weekly physical activity recommendations benefit me physically? We have two challenges today. Our first challenge is for you to reflect on the amount of physical activity and type of physical activity you performed over the last seven days. Grab a pencil and paper and draw out a seven day chart. Fill in all the physical activities you performed each day, including the type of physical activity and how much time you spent performing that physical activity. Lastly, I'd like you to reflect on the physical activity you performed throughout the last seven days compared to the physical activity recommendations for your age group. All right, go ahead and please pause the video and work on your seven day physical activity chart. All right, let's jump in. The physical activity guidelines, what are they? They're the recommendations on physical activity, sedentary behavior, and health. These recommendations are categorized by age and other factors which may, may impact our physical activity. They're provided by a federal advisory committee, which is comprised of leading researchers in the field of physical activity, health, and medicine. Every 10 years, this group of researchers puts together their new data and comes up with the next set of physical activity guidelines. The first set was released in 2008, and our current set is from 2018. The physical activity recommendations for ages 6 to 17. Most importantly, ensuring that activities are age appropriate, they're enjoyable, and they offer variety. Overall, every day, this age group should get 60 minutes or more of moderate to vigorous physical activity. Most of the activity should be aerobic, and at least three days a week, the activity should be a vigorous intensity aerobic activity. On at least three days a week, there should also be muscle strengthening activity and bone strengthening activity. Let's break down what all that means. So aerobic activities are cardio activities. The word aerobic means with oxygen. These are activities in which the large muscles of the body are moving in a rhythmic manner for a sustained period of time. It causes our heart to beat faster and breathing harder than normal. When we talk about aerobic activities in terms of moderate or vigorous intensity, we're talking about how hard a person works. Moderate intensity aerobic activities are things like walking briskly, leisurely biking, swimming or dancing, and examples of vigorous intensity aerobic activities are things like running, bike riding at higher speeds or higher resistance. Muscle strengthening activities are also called resistance training activity. These activities provide resistance for our muscles and therefore strengthen our muscles. We can strengthen our muscles through body weight activities like squats, push-ups, or rock climbing, and through the use of equipment such as dumbbells, resistance bands, etc. And bone strengthening activities are weight bearing activity. These activities produce a force on the bones during things like jumping and are bone strengthening because the force or the impact with the ground promotes bone growth and strength. Let's look at an example of how we can meet the physical activity recommendations for someone between the ages of six to 17. Remember to include at least three days a week of vigorous aerobic physical activity. Things like playing basketball and jump roping are both examples of vigorous aerobic physical activity that is also bone strengthening because of the jumping involved in the activity. Also remember to plan at least three days of muscle strengthening activities. Muscle strengthening activities can be things like kayaking, which strengthens primarily our upper body, or doing body weight exercises from the ACE exercise library. And remember that every day we should aim to have at least 60 minutes 
of moderate to vigorous physical activity. There are so many ways to incorporate physical activity into our lives. The most important part is to find our fit. Find physical activities that we enjoy doing and it'll be much easier and more fun to be physically active. Our last challenge for today is for you to find an adult ages 18 to 64 and ask them to reflect on all the physical activities they performed over the last seven days. This challenge is a great time for you and your family member to talk about ways that you can support each other in being physically active. So now let's talk about the physical activity recommendations for adults or ages 18 to 64. Adults should move more and sit less throughout the day. Some physical activity is better than none. Adults who sit less and do any amount of moderate to vigorous physical activity gain some health benefits. For substantial health benefits, adults should do at least 150 minutes to 300 minutes a week of moderate intensity aerobic activity, or 75 minutes to 150 minutes a week of vigorous intensity aerobic physical activity. Additional health benefits are gained by engaging in physical activity beyond the equivalent of 300 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity a week. Adults should also do muscle strengthening activities of a moderate or greater intensity that involve all major muscle groups on two or more days of the week, as these activities provide additional health benefits. Whew, that can feel like a lot to digest. So I really like this graphic from the physical activity guidelines to highlight in a nutshell what adults are recommended to achieve in physical activity per week. So at least 150 minutes a week of aerobic activity and at least two days a week of muscle strengthening activity. And if that's more than you can do right now, do what you can. Even five minutes of physical activity has real health benefits. There are many muscles of the human body, but this list is meant to show the major muscles of the body that are primarily responsible for our day-to-day -day movements. When strength training, it's important to think about muscle balance, performing exercises that strengthen the anterior or front and posterior or back of the body equally. When looking at the physical activity recommendations for adults, it's important to note the differences between the adolescent and the adult recommendations. Adolescents, as we remember, are recommended to get 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous aerobic physical activity a day. Adults are recommended to get at least 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous aerobic activity per week. Adults are also recommended to get two days or more of muscle strengthening activity that strengthens all the major muscles of the body. At any age, it's important to think about safety first when it comes to physical activity. To reduce the risk of injury and other negative events, people should choose types of physical activity that are appropriate for their current fitness level and health goals. Increase physical activity gradually over time. People who are currently inactive should start low and go slow by starting with lower intensity activities and gradually increasing how often and how long activities are done. Wear appropriate clothing or gear, use appropriate equipment, choose a safe environment, and make sensible choices about when, where, and how to be active. If you have any chronic health conditions or symptoms, consult a healthcare professional or a physical activity specialist about the types and amounts of activity that is appropriate for you. So, why should I avoid being sedentary throughout the day? This figure shows us a relationship among moderate to vigorous physical activity, sitting time, and risk of all-cause mortality for adults. 
This figure illustrates three main conclusions. One, high volumes of moderate to vigorous physical activity appear to remove the excess risk of all-cause mortality, or all types of death, that is associated with high volumes of sitting. Two, very low time spent sitting reduces but does not eliminate the risk of no moderate to vigorous physical activity. Given the high levels of sitting and low levels of physical activity in our population, most people would benefit from both increasing MVPA and reducing time spent being sedentary. So what are the physical health benefits of being physically active? Physical activity improves our bone health. Physical activity can improve our weight status. Physical activity can improve our cardiorespiratory and muscular fitness. It can also improve our cardiometabolic health. The American College of Cardiology states that cardiometabolic disorders represent a cluster of interrelated risk factors, primarily hypertension, elevated fasting blood sugar, dyslipidemia, abdominal obesity, and elevated triglycerides. Hypertension is abnormally high blood pressure. The top right chart shows the categories for blood pressure. To have a normal blood pressure, our systolic number, the top number, should be less than 120, and our diastolic, the bottom number, should be less than 80. Being physically active can also improve our sleep, and it can lower the risk of all-cause mortality, and it can lower the risk of cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and some cancers. Plus, physical activity has many psychological and social benefits. Those will be presented and discussed in further detail in modules 3 and 4. Overall, during this module, we hope you can get to a point where you know the physical activity recommendations for your age group, where you know the physical benefits of physical activity engagement, and you know how to create two SMART goals for engaging in physical activity. During this module, we also help you get to a point where you can perform movement breaks that interrupt your sedentary behavior every 30 minutes throughout the day. This week, we'd also like you to try three physical activities of your choice. Maybe they're new physical activities you haven't tried before, or maybe they're the three physical activities that are your favorite. Lastly, we'd like you to reflect on your personal strategies that you're going to use to achieve your SMART goals. These strategies should help you increase your physical activity throughout the day. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next week for module three.